Uh, against all odds and against better judgment. Today's artist wrote a song that went to number one on the Hot 100 and it sold over six million copies. But it would be counted among the worst songs ever written. Now to prepare for this episode, I scoured every valid list of worst song ever polls. And I was surprised to find that it rarely made the cut. I always try to be positive, but you have to trust me. This is the worst song of all time. I don't think there is a person living who would say otherwise. And yet, it isn't included in any of the worst song lists. Uh, so what's the deal? Is this actually some kind of a worst song hidden gem? I had to wonder if there are listeners who secretly like this sort of ear poison. Today, I need your help putting this song back where it belongs, squarely at the bottom. It's Hidden Gems, Worst Song Edition, next on Professor Rock. Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Except for today. We're going to celebrate the worst song ever. Make sure that you subscribe below, click the bell so you can be a part of our community and uh, latest interviews, videos, all that. Check out our Patreon. Uh, where I'm actually going to give my top 10 worst songs of all time video. So check that out. So it's time for a new program on our channel. It's going to be a history of the odd, the kitschy, and the truly awful songs of the rock era. It's usually based around songs that are a bit of a novelty, a bit bizarre, somewhat gimmicky. We're going to call the show Novelty, my dear Watson. Today we're going to give you the wretched yet fascinating history of my pick for the worst hit song of the rock era. It's a very interesting story to say the very least. Okay, it's almost universally agreed upon that the worst of the disco craze that swept the late 70s wasn't exactly modern music's finest hour. And yeah, there are a lot of people who consider it a blot on music history. But for better or worse, like any genre, the best of disco was a sound that was buzzing on the streets and the beat booming in the clubs and it would produce some truly memorable and amazing songs that would become permanent pop culture fixtures. Rock acts, it was a difficult time artistically. In fact, from the mid to late 70s, the conventional wisdom was that if you didn't jump on the disco bandwagon to a point, you weren't going to have any hits. Uh, so to stay hot on the scene, some of Rock's biggest names at the time succumbed to the pressure and created music with a disco beat into mostly pretty good results, in my opinion. But for dance acts, in particular, disco was a godsend. The genre definitely had its day in the sun. But then that day was over, and the backlash was immediate, and disco came crashing down. Came up with the idea of blowing up disco records as part of his self-serving campaign against disco. And you know what? You could blame most of it on today's song. But going back to when disco was just starting to trend... One Memphis disc jockey had the foresight to capitalize on this growing popularity, this growing this genre. He would go on to write a song that would hit number one. Easily the worst number one hit of all time. Many of the worst songs lists put the same two or three songs at the top of their list, actually. I have to say, anyone who tries to say that we built this city by Starship is somehow worse than this audible garbage needs to have their ears checked. It's not even close. If you don't know by now, I'm talking about Disco Duck by DJ Rick Dees. The worst number one hit in the, in the history of our planet. The DJ was Rick Dees, who of course later become the famed host of the Weekly Top 40 Countdown. Sounded like the Weekly Top 40 with Rick Dees. In 1976, the 20 something D's had already worked for multiple radio stations before landing at WMPS in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. During that time, Rick had spun his fair share of records in clubs as a side gig. And that allowed him to witness the rise of disco firsthand. 
Dees, who was not a musician, decided to write a satire or a novelty song, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it was called Disco Duck. The song that may have single-handedly brought the genre to its knees. <laughs> Rick drew inspiration for the song from another novelty dance tune called The Duck that was recorded by Jackie Lee in, uh, I think it was 1965. The name of this dance, child, they call a duck. Not that it's anything to brag about, but I guess it only took Rick one day to write Disco Duck. <laughs> but even though Dees had an easy time writing it, he had a hard time convincing anyone to record it. Hoping to cash in on a personal favor, Rick pitched Disco Duck to his friend Estelle Axton at Freetone Records. But honestly, she was not impressed. She told him to forget the whole idea. She could have saved us a lot of grief. However, Dees, if anything, was persistent, and he routinely stopped by the studio to beg Estelle to let him cut the song. It took three months of pleading, but ultimately Axton relented. She then let Rick use some of her session players to put his record together. Eventually, Dee signed with Axton and Freetone, and uh, she set Dee's up with guitarist Bobby Manuel, who produced the song. Now, for some unknown reason, a station in Birmingham, Alabama, jumped on Disco Duck in the summer of 1976. And that started generating play on other Southern stations and in dance clubs. After this unexpected surge, Dees quickly exhausted his stock of records. So he went in search of a larger label to handle pressing and distribution of his novelty release. After agreeing to a deal with RSO, Disco Duck started shipping hundreds of thousands of units by October of 76. From coast to coast, millions were listening to Rick Dees and his cast of idiots. As far as the song itself, now, you could argue that Disco Duck is more novelty than disco. By the mid 70s, novelty was something of a fading art form. And it's possible that Disco Duck was the, the last true novelty song to hit number one on the Hot 100. I'd have to dig a little, think about it a little deeper. But uh, that's not to say that several other novelty songs since Disco Duck hasn't given it a go. For example, Aqua's Barbie Girl, the Baja Men's Who Let the Dogs Out and uh, uh, What Does the Fox Say all have topped the charts internationally and they all suck. I mean, needles in your eyes, bash your head against the concrete wall, root canal type stuff, right? Barbie, let's go party. I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who let the dogs out? What does the fox say? So the storyline of Disco Duck goes something like this. Guy went to a party the other night. While he was there, all the ladies were treating him right. All the ladies were treating me right. And then all of a sudden, his feet start to move to the disco beat. Moving my feet to the disco beat. So he has to get out onto the dance floor. And then all of a sudden, as he's dancing, he begins acting kind of strange. All of a sudden, I begin to change. Flapping his arms, he began to cluck, and he becomes the Disco Duck. Look at me, I'm the Disco Duck. And, you know, that's more or less the song. Now, one important point here. At least in America, ducks don't cluck, they quack. Chickens cluck. So uh, I guess these threw that in for rhyming purposes. <laughs> anyway, from there, everyone starts getting down in a duck-like manner, girls shaking their tail feathers, and even the voice of Elvis makes a cameo at the end. Why, I have no idea. Thank you so very much. <laughs> but clearly, one of the most uh, integral parts of the song is the knockoff voice of a, a certain Disney duck. And we'll get into that. First, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny I wear the glasses that I wear every single day. Make sure to go to zenny.com right now to get hundreds of pairs of glasses that start at just $6.95. Again, you choose the style, the color, the shape, everything. You can even try them on virtually to see how you look before you buy. Do it today at zenny.com. <laughs> So 
So initially, there was speculation uh, that Clarence Nash, who originally voiced Donald Duck, was singing on this song. It sounds like Donald Duck to a point. However, Disney emphatically squashed that rumor. Obviously, they didn't want their beloved character associated with worst kind of novelty song. Uh, that would be beneath them. Actually, the voice of the duck was performed by Kenneth Pruitt, who was an acquaintance of Rick D's. I guess Rick had overheard Ken doing a duck voice at the gym. And supposedly that's what inspired Dees to write the song in the first place. And actually the duck voice wasn't intended to mimic Donald at all is what they said, uh, but a completely different animated waterfowl is what they were trying to go for. Hanna-Barbera's Yaki Doodle. Yaki first appeared on TV in the early 60s, but could still be seen regularly in the late 70s. Hello, my name is Yaki Doodle. What's yours? The Disco Duck vocals even parody uh, Yaki sings her phrase, are you my mama? Saying, I've got to have me a mama. Uh, let's go, mama. I've got to have me a mama. Disco Duck landed on Rick D's first album released in 77. Yes, there would be more. The record was called the original Disco Duck and it was 100% novelty. Included a total of 10 tracks with timeless standards like Dr. Disco, Bad Shark, and he ate too many jelly donuts. Rick Dees was relentless in giving horrible a whole new definition. An instrumental version of Disco Duck was also included, you know, in case you wanted to sing along. And so was Rick Dees' follow-up single, Discorella. As you've no doubt already guessed, Discorella is another gimmicky track about a disco dancing gorilla. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> now, so Dee's wasn't exactly breaking new territory with this song. It didn't do nearly as well as Disco Duck. It stalled at number 56 as people were on to his uh, disco animal fair. As Disco Duck started gaining popularity, D Station WMPS got kind of uptight about it. You know, citing conflict of interest regulations, they refused to let Rick or anyone else at the station air Disco Duck. However, that did nothing to slow the song's momentum, unfortunately. Other radio stations in Memphis, they wouldn't play the song either. But that was only because they didn't want to promote, you know, their competition. So at this point, Disco Duck was basically taking off everywhere in the U.S. except for the Memphis area. Yet it started in the South. But then one morning on the air, Dees, who was probably sick of flying under the radar, he bragged that Disco Duck might hit number one. He also just happened to mention that he'd been forbidden to play it on WMPS. When the station manager heard him talking up the song, he fired Rick on the spot. That happened on October 11th, 1976. But that had no effect on the rise of Disco Duck, which climbed to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 just five days later. Also, immediately after Dees was fired, he got picked up by crosstown rival WHBQ, and they had no problem letting him play and promote this hit song. When Disco Duck went to number one on the Hot 100, it stayed there for just one week. Thankfully, it would be replaced by Chicago's If You Leave Me Now. Praise Chicago. If you leave me now. That year, it also ranked as Billboard's 97th most popular song. This is pretty unbelievable, too. Overseas, it reached number six in the UK, and it went to number four in Australia. And in 1977, it received the People's Choice Award for Favorite New Song. What I want to know is, who voted for this, this piece of garbage? Well, if it was any designation, the favorite song, uh, that would be short-lived. The combination of novelty plus... Disco plus imitation Donald Duck would ultimately doom it to bargain bin status at best. In fact, I dare say it's the worst piece of duck-related media this side of Howard the Duck. Although I have to admit that 
Howard Finale is catchier than I remember. And I love Howard the Duck for the simple reason that it's so bad it's good. Disco Duck is just plain bad. By and large, the disco sound was being fueled by buyers who didn't take music really that seriously. And the mere fact that a label would release a song whose best line was flapping my arms, I began to cluck. Well, that just highlights the ineptitude of the music business at that time. Oh yeah, Disco Duck does have one other claim to fame, however. It turns out it appeared in the movie Saturday Night Fever in 77. Well, sort of. You can find Travolta dancing to Disco Duck in a deleted scene. No joke. I still can't believe they filmed it. What were they thinking? <laughs> Get this though, the song didn't appear on the soundtrack because, and a move that Rick is still probably cursing to this day, his manager completely shot down the idea. It was on the table. He thought that placing the song on the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack would stunt Rick D's record sales. In hindsight, let's just say it was a bad business decision since you know the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack would sell over 40 million copies worldwide. But I maintain that had they left Disco Duck in the movie and on the soundtrack, it would have cursed it to be the worst flop ever, and it would have destroyed the careers of both John Travolta and the Bee Gees at the very same time. Maybe that's just, you know, wishful thinking. But Rick Dees, he would release several more novelty albums through the years, including Gift Rappin' in 81. Oh boy. Hurt Me Baby, Make Me Write Bad Checks in 83. Put it where the moon don't shine in 84, and yeah, there's even more than that. I'll spare you the details. Dees, however, would thankfully not score another uh, top 10 hit, at least. Ooh, my Though Disco Duck may have been his musical peak, Dees is perhaps better known for his work as a DJ. I liked him. In 82, he moved out west to the LA radio station KIAS. Uh, shortly afterward, he began hosting the nationally syndicated radio program, The Weekly Top 40. The Weekly Top 40 debuted in September of 83 after the station lost Casey Kasem's much better American Top 40 to a rival station. Radio Networks proudly presents Casey Kasem's American Top 40. Part of The Weekly Top 40's appeal was Rick's uh, colorful signature use of goofy sound effects. And, you know, his comedic voices. These impressions were not only done by Rick, but also by his wife, Julie, who was a voice actor. Yeah, they were good. You know, pretty good. Dees would keep hosting the show until uh, 2004. He was replaced by Ryan Seacrest. Rick Dees also became a TV personality, and he had a short-lived talk show on ABC called Into the Night with Rick Dees, if you remember that. It was in 1990. Also on his resume, Dees hosted the TV show Solid Gold for a year in the 80s. Into the night, starring Rick Dees. All right, so for you, where does Disco Duck rank on the list of all-time worst songs? You know, when I started, I mentioned that I had researched several all-time worst songs lists. And there are the usual suspects who put out a lot of lists. There's Rolling Stone, The New York Post, the NPR, MSN, there was Blender. Surprisingly, of these, only the Post mentioned Disco Duck. There are plenty of other lesser-known list makers as well, and there's even sites dedicated to discussing the worst songs of all time out there. There's tons of them. But for the most part, Disco Duck, it's a no-show. Am I missing something here? Are you honestly telling me that people would rather listen to Disco Duck than these hundreds of other songs listed? Uh, to be clear, there are a lot of bad songs out there, no doubt. And for this discussion, I'm throwing in a qualification. I'm talking about pre-2000s here. Because let's be honest. What's showing up on the top 40 charts these days and for the last 15 years is you know, a whole different story. It seems like every week there's a new contender for worst song of all time. But just for some context, here's a small sample of songs before the new millennium that routinely made the ill-fated cut. And to be fair, 
I don't agree on all of these being up for consideration. These are just the songs that appeared the most times. We built this city on rock and roll. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't tell my heart. Honestly, in my opinion, none of these songs even approach the, the sheer mind numbing, put a power drill through your eardrum awfulness. It is Disco Duck. It's a song that I'd be happy to never hear again. But apparently, it is a hidden gem when it comes to worst all-time songs lists. Before we end, I have to say that Rick Dees owes an apology to every song in the top 40 for any week that Disco Duck was in it, especially to the nine songs that were below him when his crap-filled song was at the top of the summit. I mean, that week, you had several songs. It could have been number one in his place. It never even made it to number one. Talking about Lowdown by Boz Skaggs or Steal the One by Orleans or She's Gone by Holland Oates. Are you kidding me? One of the greatest songs of all time. She's gone. And you know, come to think of it, actually, Rick Dees owes the whole disco genre an apology. Seriously. And for creating the stereotype of bad disco. Sorry, every now and again, I have to lash out at truly terrible music. <laughs> what is that fool doing over there? So think there's something worse out there? Drop a comment below and tell me why you would prefer to listen to Disco Duck over some of these other songs or your own picks of the worst songs of all time. Let's have a fun discussion. Thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Rick Dees and Disco Duck. What do you remember about the song? What do you think about when you hear this song? Um, anyway, if you enjoy our content, make sure to subscribe below so you never miss out. Until next time, three chords and the